when we go through life, there are two seasons that are so important for all of us. And you and I have to be so careful about how we navigate through our journey of faith in those seasons. The first season is the season on the mountaintop. When you have carried this dream and God has brought it to pass. When you've been waiting and the breakthrough comes. When you've prayed and God answers your prayer. And you and I have to be careful in that season on the mountaintop. Because if we are not careful, then we make that season all about us. We forget that it is God who has lifted us. We forget that it is God who has made a way for us. We forget that it is God who has spatted the waters on our behalf. And so when we go through mountaintop experiences, it's so important that you and I pause and we give God all the glory. That in those moments of victory, in those moments of breakthrough, that we pause and we go before God and we humble ourselves before him. We remind ourselves that we are only but dust. We are human beings created from the dust. In our moments on the mountaintop, we have to be so careful that we don't take the glory away from our Heavenly Father. Because He is a jealous God. He will not share His glory with another. And yes, God can use people around us, but we have to be so careful that we always point back all the glory to Him. That we give Him praise and we give Him glory. And we ask Him in that season to use us for us to become instruments in his hands, for us to be used of him for his own glory and for his own name. So the first season is the season on the mountaintop, the season when everything seems to align, when everything seems to be working, when there are open doors, when the favor is manifesting over our lives. In that time of celebration, let's give our Heavenly Father all the praise and all the glory. Maybe you're going through a mountaintop experience right now. I want to challenge you that you would go before God. You would offer him a, a, a sacrifice of worship. You would surrender once more to him and give him all the glory and give him all the praise. We have to be careful that our mountaintop experiences don't become about us. But the second experience that we have to be very careful about is when we are going through the valley. Because when we are going through the valley, for many of us, we give in to our feelings. And we are driven more by what we feel than who God is. We are driven more by our emotion. We are driven more by our, our desire. The challenge in the valley is that it's so easy for you to make an idol out of a need or to make an idol out of something that you desire God to do for you. And when we are there in the valley, it's so easy for you and I to begin to seek more, to come out of that valley than to experience God for who he is right there in that valley. I don't know about you, but I've discovered that in my own life, it's in my seasons in the valley that I've gotten to truly know who God is. Job said, my ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. That when we go through the valley, somehow everything is stripped away from us. Everything that we've held on to is stripped away from us. Everything that has become a point of identity is stripped away from us. Sometimes it's the business that begins to struggle. Sometimes it's a challenge that we have with our own health. Sometimes it's a season of loss. Sometimes it's grief. That we go through a point of grief where it seems as if nothing around us can make any sense. When we go through the valley, for many of us, we feel as if God has abandoned us as if God no longer cares about us. And it's so easy there in the valley to give in to our feelings and to forget who God is. I want to say to you, your current need does not define who God is. Your current challenges do not define who God is. Do not diminish God to the size of that which you are trusting him for. Because he's so much more. He is so much more. He is so much more than what I need in this moment. He is so much more than the dreams I carry in this moment. 
He is so much more than whatever it is I could be going through in my seasons in the valley. And so we have to be careful that there in the valley that we remind ourselves who God is and we remind ourselves of our relationship with him and who he has called us to be. Because everything that you and I need is found in a place of intimacy with God. Everything that you and I need is found in the presence of our Lord. Everything that you and I need is found in the presence of our God. And so you and I have to seek God's presence, to seek to know him, not only to know him, but to live for him. You see, the children of Israel, they sought the hand of God. They sought the miracles. They cried out in the wilderness for what God could do for them. But Moses was different. Moses pursued the face of God. Moses pursued intimacy with God. He pursued this place of intimacy with God. That God would say about Moses that he spoke with him as a man speaks to another man. As a man speaks to their friend. When you're going through the valley, rather than focusing your attention on what you're going through, rather than focusing on what you need, rather than turning your need there in the valley into an idol, turn your eyes and focus on who God is. And there in the valley, one of the things I've come to discover is that there is no other place that teaches us the place of authentic worship than there in the valley. There is no place that teaches us the value of fellowship with God and with other believers than there in the valley. In that place there in the valley, we learn true worship. We learn to worship God even when we can't see our way out of our current circumstances. We learn to worship. And I believe that worship is what happens when the songs are over. Worship is what happens in the silence. Deep in the night when you can't make sense of what you're going through. And you get on your knees and you say, Lord, I worship you. I adore you. I give you praise and I give you glory. I can't make sense of this moment, but I worship you and I adore you. That in the same way as on the mountaintop, we give God all the glory. We give him all the praise. We give him all the worship. And we seek Intimacy with him. Intimacy with him. Because intimacy precedes fruitfulness. Intimacy will always precede fruitfulness. There is what you can do out of your own hands. Out of the strength of your hands. Out of your own gifting. There's what you can do. But you know what? There is a level that you will only get to by the grace and favor of God upon your life. And that grace and favor of God upon our lives, we can't earn it. We can't earn it through what we do. The only way that we get to the place where we have the grace and favor of God upon our lives is when we come and we worship him and we seek that place of intimacy with him. When you're on the mountaintop, when you're in the valley, remind yourself who God is and then remind yourself what he says about you. Remind yourself what God says about you. In John chapter 15, and from verse 1, the word of God says, I'm the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it can be even more fruitful. It says in verse 3, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And then verse 4, he declares, Jesus declares and says, remain in me. Remain in me as I also remain in you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. And then he goes ahead and says, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in the vine. Continues and says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear 
much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Remain in me as I remain in you. And you have to come to the point of realizing that our victory is in our connectedness. Our victory is in how connected we are to the vine. It's in our staying connected that we stay fruitful. It's in our staying connected that we are able to be victorious. You are here, you're going through a battle. You can't win by your own strength. You can't win out of your own conviction. It's when we are connected to him. How do we stay connected? Number one, we have to remember that we did not choose him, he chose us. You didn't choose yourself, God has chosen you. God has chosen you. God has positioned you where you are. When you read John 15, verse 16, he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. You did not choose me, but I chose you so that you might go and bear fruit. And then he goes ahead and declares, fruit that will last. And then he adds this statement and he says, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. So that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Because we are connected to him. Because we are living lives that honor and glorify his name. It's in our connectedness. It's in our remaining in him. When the lives that we are living are pleasing before him, you know, we live in a generation where compromise, we've embraced compromise. But Andrew said, you know what? God's standard 2,000 years ago has not changed. God's standard from creation has not changed. God has not lowered his standard to accommodate you and I. God's standard is still, is still the same. And so we can't be on one side, we are praying and seeking the face of God, but then on the other side, we are living a life that is not pleasing before him. There has to be a congruence. There has to be a oneness. There has to be an alignment in who we are. And if you're living a double life, you are robbing yourself. You are robbing yourself of all that God has for you. Because we're living in a time where God is looking for men and women that he can use. God is looking for vessels that he can use. I pray that you and I will be vessels that he can use. He says that he has chosen us. He has chosen you. Sometimes we read the scripture and we don't see ourselves in that scripture. God has chosen you. God has chosen you. And out of that place of knowing that God has chosen us, we can have confidence when we come before him. Because we know that he's with us, that he's fighting for us. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I have appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. He says, this is my command, love each other. So what is the true test of whether we're walking in intimacy with God and honoring him? It's in how we relate with one another. It's in our love for one another. It says, how can you love God whom you have not seen? If you are not able to love your brother whom you can see. If you cannot love the people that are around you that you can see, then how can you claim to love God that you have not seen? And so he then calls us to be vessels of his love, to be men and women that love. And you come to discover that when we love, then we no longer live for ourselves, but we choose to be an instrument in the hand of God that he can use for his glory and for his name. Now Isaiah chapter 41 from verse 9 the word of God says, I took you from the ends of the earth. I took you from the ends of the earth. From its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. From the ends of the earth, I have taken you. From its farthest corners, I have called you. I have said that you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. God wants you to know that his hand is upon your life. That his hand is upon your life. 
that he has a plan and a purpose for your life. That it's not in vain that we come and we cry out to him. That God has so much more for you. He has so much more for you. But then he goes ahead in verse 10 and he declares, he declares, so do not fear. Do not fear because you're not alone. Do not fear for I am with you. He says, do not be dismayed for I am your God. Do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He's saying, I'm with you. I'm with you. Don't be anxious. I'm with you. Do not fear. I'm your God. Do not be dismayed. Do not be moved. Because I'm with you. Not only am I with you, but I will strengthen you. And I will help you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When we have that awareness, then we are no longer distracted by the things of this world. We are no longer distracted by circumstances. But every single day we wake up in the morning and we say, Lord, I need you. And I worship you. And I want to live for you. I want to live a life that brings glory and honor to your name. I want to live a life that brings glory and honor to your name. Because everything you need, everything you need, it's in his presence. And if we can stop chasing after things and chasing after people and chasing after highs, we live in a world where we're chasing the next high, you know. And I said sometimes one of the worst things that can happen, to, can happen to you is for you to fulfill your dream. Because you can live your life chasing this dream and then you fulfill this dream and it will, it will shock you how empty, how empty this thing that you've been chasing after is. How empty it is. So you can't live your life chasing after highs. You can't live your life chasing after the next high moment. You can't live your life chasing after the applause of men. Because when you expect that applause and it's not there, it's going to break you. You can't live your life pursuing the applause of men. You can't live your life just chasing after things. You can't live your life just chasing. But all of us have to come to the place where we lay our lives on the altar and we don't show up with a plastic knife and we want to remain alive on that altar. I've discovered God uses men and women who have chosen to die to themselves. And if you will die to yourself and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Not my desire, but your will for my life. If you will choose every single day to die to self and to live a life that honors and glorifies God, do you know what God will do? God will lift you up. And what I have found, what God does is God wants to show off. He shows up and then he wants to show off through your life. He says, look at my servant, the one who has submitted himself to me. Look at my servant, the one who has focused his life on seeking after my will. And God begins to do a new work in us for his glory and for his name. So we don't need the breakthrough. We need the presence of God upon our lives. We need his favor. We need his hand. And if we can turn our hearts towards him, the breakthrough will come. His favor will come. And he will make a way for us. Heavenly Father, we come. Lord, we come. We come. We come hungry for you. Father, we hunger for you. We thirst for you. And Lord, we need you. Father, we need you. We need you. Lord, we need you. You are there, you've been battling with a sense of emptiness. You are battling with a sense of emptiness. Just a sense of emptiness. You feel as if your life has no meaning. You're battling with despair and hopelessness. Maybe your heart has been drawn away from the Lord. Maybe it's just the things that you've chased after. And you found yourself just in a place where nothing makes sense anymore. Maybe for you, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord over your life. 
But you're saying, Lord, I need you today. And today I yield my life. I yield my life. I surrender my life. I yield my life. If that is you, would you just stand where you are? I'm saying, Lord, I need you. I need you. I feel so empty on the inside. I feel so alone. I'm battling. And I need you. I need you to intervene on my behalf. If that is you, would you stand? Do you stand where you are? You stand. Say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I'm here. But I need you. I need you. I need you. I'm saying I need you. I'm saying I need you. Can you pray with me this prayer? Let's all say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your love that you died on the cross for me. I yield myself once more. I choose you as Lord. I confess you as Lord. I surrender all to you. Take my hand and lead me. In Jesus' name. You are here, you need direction. Whichever way you turn, you're saying, Lord, I need you to direct me. Show me what to do. I need you. I want your will to be done in my life. I want to submit to your will over my life. If that is you, would you stand where you are? You're saying, Lord, I need direction. You are in the valley of decision. Lord, I need to know your will. Lord, I want to know your will. Will you just open up your hands to surrender to him? Say, Lord, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I surrender all to you. Father, I pray over your children. You say in your word that whether we turn to the right or we turn to the left, that we will hear a voice behind us say, this is the way. Walk in it. So, Father, I speak a clarity of voice. Clarity of voice in the name of Jesus. Clarity of voice. That they would hear your voice. Lord, I speak boldness. I speak against fear. I speak boldness upon them in the name of Jesus. The Father, they will live and walk a path that honors you. That brings glory and honor to your name. I pray that you will order their steps. You will light their path. Father, you will make a way where there seems to be no way. Grant them open doors. Lord, grant them favor. That there shall be a testimony. There shall be a testimony. That shall be a testimony. They shall testify of your goodness in the land of the living. They shall testify in the land of the living of your goodness and of your faithfulness. So we worship you and we exalt you. We're going to do one last prayer. I'm going to ask all of us to stand where you are, wherever we are. You're watching online at home, wherever you are. You can just stand with us. And as we stand, we are living in a time where God is looking for men and women he can use. He is looking for men and women that he can use. God is looking for men and women that he can use. That he can use in the cities. That he can use in the nations. You know, for some of you, God is going to send you to Europe for you to go and work and have jobs. And God will use you there as missionaries for the message of the gospel. There's some of you, God is raising you up in business because God wants to use you. Some of you, God is raising you up. God is going to raise you in your careers. Not so that you can just thump and tell people who you are, but so that you can testify of who God is. There's some of you, God is lifting you up on a platform. And God is working out in your life right now. You feel as if there has been delay. God has forgotten you, but God is preparing to lift you and to raise you. And he is looking for men and women that he can use. If you want to know the secret to elevation is when you become a young man, a young woman, a man, a woman that God can use. When you say, God, here I am. Use me. God will take you further than you could ever possibly think or imagine. God will open doors that are beyond your wildest expectation. Because God is looking for men and women that will represent him, that will stand for him and declare his goodness in the land of the living. 
God is looking for those men and women. And every day of my life, I wake up in the morning and I say, God, I want to be that man. I want to be that woman. And that's my prayer for you, that you will make a commitment in your heart today. And you will say, God, I want to be a man that you use. I want to be a woman that you use. It's not just about praying for your own provision. It's about saying, God, bless me so that I can be a blessing. I don't pray to meet my own needs. I pray that God will help me to meet the needs of others around me. That God will use you, whatever he's planted you, whatever he's positioned in your own family. That God will raise you up in that family and use you for his glory and for his own name. So let that be our prayer. God, use me. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Father, use me. Use me. Use me for your glory. Use me for your name. The new songs that will be sung. New songs that will be sung, testifying of his goodness and of his faithfulness. If you can just lift up our hands before him as an act of surrender. And just surrender your life before him. And say, Lord, I desire nothing else but that you would use me. You would use me in my family. You would use me in my home. You would use me in my place of work. Use me in my business. Use me in this city. Use me in this nation. Use me beyond the borders of this nation. Use me beyond this continent. Father, would you use me? Lord, use me. Lord, use me. So, Father, we come and we bow before you. We come and we surrender before you. As your eyes range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are turned towards you, Father, find in us. Find in us men and women that you can use. Find in us men and women that you can use. Lord, find in us men and women that you can use. Use us for your glory. Lord, use us for your name. Use us, O oh God, that men would know you. Shine your light through us that we would become salt and light for your glory and for your name. Father, we praise you. We exalt you. I speak your anointing over my brothers and sisters. I speak your anointing upon them in the name of Jesus. When they cry out to you, Lord, you will hear the cry of their heart. When they lay hands on the sick, the sick will receive healing. When they declare your goodness, Lord, your spirit will flow in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will hear the cry of their heart. You will answer them when they call. You will open doors for them, for your glory and for your name. And now use them. Use them all over the city. Use them all over the nation. Send them across this continent. Send them, O oh God, into Europe. Send them to Australia. Send them into the U.S. Send them, O oh God. Send them into Asia. Father, send them. Lift them. That men would know you. That men would live for you. We give you praise. We give you glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Amen and amen.